so I'm curious, you know, Nicole, you come from a, at least more recently a military background. And, and so there was an aspect there. And then you left the military, if I understand correctly, and then kind of making the pursuit down this direction. Uh, aside from that, what was a motivation that comes to mind for you that drove you into now choosing uh, software development as a career path versus one of the many different things you could probably utilize your benefits and, you know, all the things to do. Why software? Oh, absolutely, Adam. So um, the most close to home uh, motivator was definitely my brother. My older brother has been in software developing for like 10 years, 10 plus years now. And I mean, since graduating high school, he's kind of been there. Hey, you should really check this out. And, you know, when you're young, no, I have my own path. So I checked out um, the military and I and I wouldn't regret it. You know, I would do it again, 100 times again. Um, but it just wasn't what I was looking for. And so towards the end of my last contract, I kind of was talking to my brother about what exactly he does and exactly how it's helped him because even in my brother as like, you know, knowing him on that personal level, I saw a 180 degree change once he got into this industry, like just the freedom that it allowed, um, it, it allowed him to be himself. He's always felt like trapped in a box when it came to like um, any other job that he's held. So seeing that firsthand, definitely um, once I got to that age where I knew the military was not for me, um, I was like, you know what, I'm going to check this out. So as Brian was saying, I was doing free code camp my last year in the Navy. Um, and then once that, once that interest was peaked on my end, it was full send. Um, I separated and then I found learn and it was the best decision. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So what, uh, kind of speaking to the other side of that, which is what were you afraid of? Like, I, I would imagine that there was a degree of some some level of risk rattling around in your head of like uh i don't know that uh, you know this won't work out or something like that like was there was there any kind of core fears or anything along those lines that were coming up for you at all as you were trying to make that choice to go down this path or was it kind of like a nope 100 percent game on it's gonna work uh no absolutely there was an uh, <laughs> tremendous amount like a fear that an uncertainty that I had because um, so not only am I leaving the stability that the Navy was providing me, right? Um, it's just like, it goes to back to the transparency of, you know, my own upbringing, right? So it was unstable. So that was all I knew. So taking this leap into this unknown was crazy scary. <laughs> so, I mean, from just even reaching out so going to learn that learn that organ like making that first contact that initial contact was nerve-wracking for me because it was like how do I know this is the right choice well you know how will you ever know so I feel like once I found the motivation to fully go through the admission process oh I was pedal to the metal I said I'm gonna make it work because <laughs> at that point I had no other choice I was like you know what I separated this is this is it. Like I'm going to make it work. And that's what I did. So just hard charging, just full steam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It it's, it's a hard move to make. I mean, I feel really lucky in a, in a lot of ways in that I kind of found myself myself into it. And uh, one of the benefits of coming from stage acting is I look like a natural extrovert, mm -hmm. but in reality, it's a trained behavior. Um, <laughs> extroversion is kind of name of the game. And so I feel lucky that my comfort in front of people I don't know has been able to help me kind of dive into uncertain situations. But there's a lot of people, most people don't have that um, mm -hmm. as a part of their life path. And so either they identify more as being introvert or quiet and like, and so the idea of like going into something very new where there's a ton of uncertainty, a bunch of people that they're not familiar with that may not have similar backgrounds as them at all you know, like might feel really kind of scary and incredibly uncertain. So I get it from a distance. And so it's always curious to me. I'm always fascinated when I kind of hear people's stories coming through that transition. Uh, Ari, if I would, I wanted to ask you a very similar question. Like, 
uh, two parts. First was, what was your biggest motivator? And two, what was a big fear that fear or two that would co- that came up for you as you're kind of making the choice to go from here to there? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm going to be honest, quality of life was probably one of the biggest ones, not just in regards to money, but also like the freedom to kind of work from anywhere um is the you know uh how it seems to be with with tech these days and um also especially in the animal care field if you want to become a nurse or vet tech uh, or anything like that there's still a lot of rules about having colored hair having tattoos wearing jewelry having nails like not expressing yourself like that and i've always been a very yeah you know, I, I have bright blue hair and that's never going away Um, so when I went into this, um, I've always kind of taken on this mindset of, I can't fail. It's not going to happen. I can't let that happen. So I was literally working Saturday, Sunday, full shifts, going to learn Monday through Friday, staying up until 12 or 1 AM, just trying to figure everything out and failure wasn't an option for me. So was I scared? Yeah. Absolutely. There's always that part of me that's like, well, what if you, what if you fail? What if you can't do this? What if you get out and you can't find a job, but then you just have to turn around and be like, I'm not going to, because the alternative is that I didn't get myself anywhere after putting myself through all of this. And that's not going to happen. I'm not going to let that happen. So, you know, it's kind of a constant thing of living with that. Oh, well, what if you mess up? Well, I'm not going to mess up. I'm not going to let myself mess up. We're just going to keep pushing through it. Even if I mess up, like ultimately every mess up I've ever made in my life has pushed me forward somewhere. I wouldn't have been if I hadn't messed up. So I, I can live with the fear. That is stellar. I love that. Uh, there was an analogy used uh, at a conference I went to years ago talking about success. And the individual at the conference was saying, success is like standing in line at a cafeteria that everyone gets to the back, but if you stand in it long enough, you will get to the front. Now, if you end up distracted, you're stepping out of line and where do you end up going? Right back to the beginning again. And here's the irony is that the initial fear is when you're at the back of that line that it's so long, it's gonna take forever, I'll never ever get there. And so it's easy to kind of look at that as the cost of involvement and be discouraged by it. But if you remember, other people are going to get distracted and step out of line. And it's going to move you forward along that path much more quickly than it appears to be in the very beginning. And often that differentiator is the thing you just said there. And I loved what you said about that kind of mental resilience of like, even when I fear it, even when it comes up consciously in my mind, I'm going to tell myself, no, that's not what this is about. I am going to succeed at this. You got to muscle through. And it is totally true. That especially in this path, people who are afraid that they won't know how to do the thing, they'll never learn how to code, they'll never figure it out. If they just stay at it, put enough reps in, they will get there. It's inevitable. It is just not something that you fail at easily unless you let yourself fail at it easily. So that is 